experiment I'm presenting to you today uh, was conducted uh, with uh, my colleague Ivana Dudek and a, a postdoctoral student called uh, Kamite Saigi in a uh, research unit that is called MAP. So very briefly said, MAP is, works more or less like that, takes some information sciences, takes some engineering sciences, apply it to heritage sciences, and in particular to the architectural heritage. Now, I will be a bit more precise than that. In fact, over the past years, my unit has been um, investi investing on two research lines. One is survey protocols, acquisition, processing, publishing of 3D data sets. And the other is information visualization, providing tools for reasoning on historical evidence, spotting trends, spotting exceptions. The example I'm showing to you here, oops, sorry, uh, it's called uh, concentric time, concentric time, this place that you see here is Krakow's main square. Okay, um, radiating from the map are basically timelines on which we report various events that occurred on each of the edifices that were built on that market square. What you see here are three exceptions, three edifices that remain until now on the market square. And what you see in black over here all the edifices that have been destroyed at, in the beginning of the 19th century. So to say it differently, what we do is, on one hand, focus on depicting, depicting one heritage item, and in particular from the point of view of its geometrical features. On the other hand, we rather tend to focus on analyzing sets, collections of heritage items, and to analyze things that go beyond geometrical features. And so the experiment I'm presenting today is somehow trying to bridge that gap between the two uh, lines of research I've mentioned. Now, more generally speaking, the observations found in this experiment are as follows. A growing capacity of academics to produce large 3D data sets, typically through uh, laser scanning, over here. And in parallel, the emergence of low-cost survey techniques. Now, this second point uh, raises a new methodological question. What interpretation lines does that open? What new opportunities as researchers, as analysts of architecture, does that uh, open? OK, so this experiment is something like investigating the feasibility, but more important, the added value of using a low-cost 3D survey protocol in order to reread pieces of architecture through proportions, geometrical relations, ratios, etc. So, this is the outline of my uh, talk. I'll start by some terminological uh, disambiguation on the word proportion. What do, what do we mean exactly? I'll very briefly mention some ideas about proportions in architecture, very briefly, and then I'll detail the experiment from the point of view of. Uh, the equation step and from the point of view of the analysis step before concluding on future works. So a bit of disambiguation. What do we mean when we talk of, uh, in this research about proportions? Now, uh, the Roman architect defines uh, in his Vitruvius, in his book, uh, Ten Books of Architecture, defines proportion as follows. Proportion is a correspondence among the measures of the members of an entire work and of the whole to a certain part selected as standard. The most classic example is, of course, the module, which is supposed to be the radius of the shaft, and that is used to dimension all the rest of the column. Okay? To dimension, but also to position pieces of architecture, columns typically, in the, uh, edifices, of, in the edifice of the hall. But this uh, interpretation of the word is not the only one that exists. In the architectural discourse, uh, you will find uh, the word proportion used as a sort of synonym of architectural beauty. This is coined by uh, Matthew Cohen in a quite interesting uh, special issue of architectural histories. Well, this author tells us, okay, please say what you mean when you talk about proportion. So this is what I'm trying to do. I will mention proportion intended as Proportion as ratio, and I'm showing it to you on one example from Cohen on Brunelleschi's architecture, take one dimension and try to see 
what other dimensions are in relation to this first dimension. So this is what would be meant when I use the word proportion. Now, in the uh, history of architecture, naturally, uh, proportion has mattered over years, over time. From the uh, Roman period, Vitruvius, I mentioned him, uh, through the Romanist period, with ratios, classic ratios used uh, quite often. In the Renaissance period, this is Brunesti's Capella della, delle Pazzi, dei Pazzi. Uh, and of course, up to the modernist period, this is Villa Stein by Le Corbusier, and it is built on a rhythm 1 2 1 2. So, in fact, the concept of proportion goes through time in uh, the history of architecture. But more important in that experiment, uh, proportion can be seen as a prescription, something that, as a designer, you should know in order to dimension your edifice. This is why Le Corbusier uh, invented this system of proportion, the uh, modular. What he does when he does that is say, okay, you want to build something, use this. This is one way to use proportions, but you can also use proportions in retrospect. This analysis of Brunelleschi's architecture is done by a specialist in retrospect. One classic example can be found in uh, Violet Le Duc's uh, analysis, written works, analysis of the Gothic period in particular. This is a tri fi triangular figure he uses to try and analyze the way a Gothic cathedral is built. So what he does is, okay, uh, draw tri triangles like this and then shows the relations, the uh, proportions between the various parts of the edifice. Now, Julian does it for one edifice, but you can use this same uh, way of reasoning when you want to compare edifices. Let's take his triangle and use it to uh, observe how nails of Gothic cathedral uh, compare to one another. This is the figure we will use. And of course, we are supposed to know that in the Gothic period, they tended to grow, to build buildings year after year, bigger and bigger. So. This is 1145, and let's take a later one, 1220. When you look at this, you think, okay, it's just a homotetic relation. They are growing, these edifices are growing bigger, and that's all. When you look at it in, with a bit more of detail and add some other edifices, this one, and this one, and this one, okay, you see that the lines are not that parallel. Homotetic relations are not that obvious. In fact, what you observe when you look at it, at a whole collection, gains in height, that's true, relative stability in width, but what you observe are thresholds, in fact. Here, here, here. So the triangular figure can be used to sort of reread a collection as such. You can also naturally correlate that with uh, dating, dates, and you will see that, okay, they were growing bigger, but not systematically. In this little sample, the smallest is one of the um, most recent. Now let's come to the experiment itself. What I've shown here is that proportions can be an effective rewarding lecture grid when observing elaborate pieces of architecture. But can they be on, of any benefit when observing small-scale vernacular architecture like this type of edifice? Well, from our point of view, that is precisely an issue that the emergence of low-cost, lightweight survey protocols allows us to address. So the experiment, uh, we make no claim that the experiment will or did end on uh, uncovering significant trends in, in terms of way of building. What we wanted to do is just check whether or not this uh, approach of uh, um, using 3D data sets was worth trying. So, context of this experiment. The experiment was carried out in the context of a short-term uh, research program on citizen science and um, uh, minor heritage. In fact, we had a concern for uh, different collections, not only rural chapels. I will focus naturally on this aspect uh, today. As part of that initiative, the idea came that, okay, a low-cost survey protocol for the acquisition of 3D data could be tried out. This is for the context. Our choice was to use photographic captors and a variety of photographic captors from mobile phone to cameras. And the approach builds on a, um, an 
application that is developed in my uh, laboratory by colleagues that I quote here. This uh, platform is called IOLI. It is an uh, annotation, 3D annotation program or a platform. The application generates a 3D point cloud from photographs, a point cloud that can then be annotated. It is based, it is basically a photogrammetry application, an online photogrammetry application using JavaScript libraries for the uh, visualization part. So, using that application, you can uh, outline 3D regions inside the um, subsets of the point cloud, inside the point cloud, and then reproject on the uh, initial photographs the uh, region that you have uh, outlined. But this is not the uh, service we have used. We have used another one. In this experiment, we make use of another feature, retrieving relative dimensions, quantities that will be saved as ratios, not dimensions, quantities, relative ones, before the scaling of the uh, 3D model. So, the whole protocol looks like this. The input are photographs you, uh, using various captors. The processing pipeline is a classic one. Feature detection, calibration, and then dense matching. And what we do with the uh, results are two things. On one hand, publish the uh, free point cloud, PL Wi-Fi. And on the other hand, use ratios that we have uh, gathered and transfer them in a visual language, abstract visual language. And this is the part that I will detail now. Let's have a look at what ratios we have selected for this uh, attempt. Proportions of facet, this one, this one, facet versus bell tower in width and in height, surfaces of openings versus um, a facet. So very briefly, I will tell you how it works. Three visual languages. The first one looks like this. The width is set as a fixed unit, and then we express the height through a percentage. So if you have a, something that is as width, as wide, as high, you will have something that looks like this. What you spot are things like this, rather elevated, an exception, and trends, similarities in the collection. Facet versus bell tower, now we, here the square represents 100% of the width of the facet and of its height. Then we draw the rectangle representing the bell tower. The width of the uh, bell tower is represented in uh, relation to this of the facet. So this does not show the shape of the bell tower, but it does only show the uh, um, relation between two. With a square, you have a homothetic relation. Here again, you see that this one has a rather flat thing here, the facet being very high. Again, trend similarities can be observed. The third line, this is an exception, of course, and the third line looks like this. The square represents the surface of the facade, surface of windows and of door are represented with color uh, squares. This is an exception. So these three help reading one edifice after the other, but doesn't help reading the collection as such. So for this, we try two classic uh, um, visual formalisms. The first is parallel coordinates. Each of these Columns correspond to one feature, and here you can read them clusters, like this one, with various edifices. And finally, another attempt is this thing, a distribution plot. Uh, works like this. All that is on the left and higher than the diagonal are uh, bell towers that are higher, thinner than the facade. All that is in the bottom right, flatter. And what you see on this clearly is that, in fact, only one of these uh, bell towers is in homothetic relation with the facet. So just to conclude now, what we have done up to now is in fact only delineating a playground. We don't say that we have uncovered significant things in, in ways of building, but it does show that there is a line of research ahead using low cost survey protocols when you want to address uh, issues in relation with minor heritage where you don't have the money necessary or the accessibility to uh, use large-scale instruments. The uh, perspective of this uh, research uh, is a new, pro new research program in which we will use a multimodal um, protocol with both panoramic um, uh, photogrammetry and point-to-point -point measurement. This time, 
to try and see what we can gain in, to, in, in uh, the understanding of the inside, the interior of these edifices. That's it. Thank you.